But first, the Prime Minister started the new year with a trip to Western Canada. Earlier today, Harper took part in a question and answer session with the Vancouver Board of Trade, where the focus was on trade, the Northern Gateway Pipeline and the economy. The biggest reality we face as a country <clears throat> is that we're a relatively small open economy in a world that remains wrought with economic uncertainty. Um, and we will be inevitably uh, buffeted to some degree by the uh, uncertainties and the up ups and downs of the economy around us. Uh, that said, Canada's economic fundamentals are very strong. I won't go through all of those. I think people know them here, the banking sector, the fiscal situation, the strength of our labor force, other things. We're in a relatively strong position and our government is determined to do all of the things necessary to strengthen us, whether it's in you know, areas like innovation or infrastructure or a more responsive immigration system, we are doing all of the things that we think are necessary to exploit the opportunities uh, before us. To examine the Prime Minister's take on the economy, let's bring in our very first MP panel of 2014. Joining me from Toronto, NDP finance critic Peggy Nash, from Halifax, liberal finance critic Scott Bryson, and here with me in studio, Conservative MP Aaron O'Toole. Uh, Aaron, I'll start with you. The Prime Minister says that we're on solid footing, but there's always challenges internationally. How confident is the Conservative government going forward into 2014 that you can maintain the economic performance uh, that you've been trumpeting yourself on? I think the Prime Minister expressed his optimism for 2014 and he has great reason to be optimistic. In the last few years, Canada has truly led the developed world in terms of growth, in terms of job creation, the soundness of our financial institutions. Um, there's been almost a million net new jobs, most of them full time since the depths of the recession. So Canada really is in an enviable position. But we need our trading partners to also have their economies to grow. So we like, to, we like what we see in the U.S. in terms of uh, indications that that uh, economy is, is starting to really gain traction. There's countries in Europe. We have a, a terrific new trade agreement that will be uh, finalized uh, with the European Union. And a lot of countries there are, are coming past some of their struggles in recent years. So Canada's work and the Prime Minister's work in particular has laid the groundwork for some tremendous years once our trading partners start to recover and buy our, our goods and services. And so I think he has good reason to, to be optimistic, but also to say to, uh, to Canadians that the economy's strong and we're continuing to focus on it. Scott, we hear about the economy, the economy, the economy from the Conservatives. Uh, it clearly is a platform they're confident on. Is their record as good as they make it out to be? Well, for middle-class Canadian families, and particularly those with children in their 20s now who have gone to university or college and can't get a good job, they face real challenges. There, there, is, uh, there are 225,000 fewer jobs for young Canadians than before the downturn. Young Canadians have been left behind in this so-called recovery. And uh, middle-class families, their parents and grandparents, are directly subsidizing these, these young Canadians who are underemployed, uh, who can't get a good paying job, who cannot support themselves. And this is driving personal debt levels to record highs, uh, around a buck sixty-five for every dollar of annual income. And some estimates from some of the bank economists are that a big driver of these personal debt levels is the direct financial subsidization of young Canadians who can't get a good start. So I think the government's out of touch with the realities faced by young Canadians and their middle class families who are struggling to get by right now with record levels of debt and they're struggling to get by now when interest rates are low and they're petrified of what will happen in the future as interest ri rates rise. So I, I well, think that the government that there, there uh, be... is, is, is out of touch with the realities faced by middle class families. We've heard there may be increasing pressure for the government, uh, or not the government, it's the Bank of Canada that would make the decision to raise that interest rate uh, as the American economy starts to pick up. Peggy, I want to go to you in just a moment, but I want you to react to something that Jim Flaherty said. We have this clip from him that I'd like to play for you now. As we're controlling our spending, and that's within our control, our own government spending. We're not reducing transfers to the provinces to individuals to people with disabilities to seniors we're just controlling our own departmental spending and that is under control and if the american economy which we see is beginning to grow and and the economists are saying 2014 is probably going to be a better year um, we could be in even better shape potentially we could be we, we could have a larger surplus than we anticipate but we will have a surplus 
So Peggy Flaherty says that the government is managing to keep things under control and to balance the budget for 2015, possibly an even bigger surplus than they were expecting, not cutting transfers to the provinces uh, and some of the most controversial elements like that. But do you think that a balanced budget is coming at too high a cost? Well, the government's economic forecasts have been wildly inaccurate so far, so let's see what 2014 brings. Uh, you know, for the average Canadian family, for most middle class families, they have the highest household debt ever and they're really struggling. A lot of people are seeing their, their income stagnate or decline and it's especially difficult for young people who can't get a toehold in the job market. Um, but the federal government has continued on its path of cutting services, cutting programs, in many cases undermined public safety when it comes to food inspection and transportation. And uh, I think for those of us who lost power over the holiday period, we've seen our flagging infrastructure where this government and previous governments have not been investing in modernizing our physical infrastructure, whether it's transit, hydro, um, services across the country. So um, we've seen uh, their cuts that have come at great cost. And we'll see if there's a surplus this year and how that gets spent. Um, some, of their, uh, some of their projected plans would benefit those with significantly higher incomes, like income splitting. What they are proposing sounds like it's going to benefit more of the people at the top of the income scale, but not the average person, especially young people who are falling further and further behind. Erin, I want to give you an opportunity to respond. Some critical comments from both the Liberal and NDP side. Uh, I think they're doing their best to try and be critical without, without you know, stating that Canada truly is leading the world. There's still dif difficult times. I, we're not kidding ourselves on what's happening in Europe. The growth is slow, and our friends in the U.S. have been experiencing slow growth. But if you, if you look at the track record, we, we have very, very good economic conditions in Canada. We'd like to see uh, better employment rates for young Canadians. But overall, our economy has created a million new jobs, most of them full time. And we've targeted specifically the middle class, middle class families. Well, Scott's Liberal government for their entire time talked about daycare. Our government's actually delivered a daycare program that provides families with choice. We also provide small but meaningful tax credits for children's fitness, children's uh, arts programs. We're trying to bring com competition to bring wireless rates and, and more choice in, in TV. All of these are bills that families in my riding of Durham have been telling me have been going up in recent years and squeeze that cash grab at the end of each month. We're trying to give families more flexibility. We brought in income splitting for seniors because they were on fixed incomes and were impacted by rising costs. We'd like, once we provide a balanced budget, to look at bringing that to families. And we're only in this economic position because we've been prudent and we haven't done what the Liberals did, which was slash transfer, uh, transfers to the provinces. We've maintained and increased those. So it's been difficult, but our work over the last few years is getting us into a period where we're going to have a balanced budget without any of the, the draconian uh, measures that my friends are suggesting. And our last budget had a Build Canada plan for infrastructure that will have more infrastructure investments over the next 20 years. That than actually ever cut before. infrastructure so spending for 2014. Yeah, Scott, I actually want to ask you this question. A lot of awfully consumer-friendly things in this platform. Are you worried that Justin Trudeau can't compete with that? Does he have the seriousness to run against Stephen Harper on the economy? Well, the Conservatives offer trinkets and baubles to try to buy the votes of middle-class families. Middle-class families are actually seeing that their lives aren't getting better as a result of these, these policies. Uh, the Conservatives are more focused on focus group economics and, and getting the people's support during an elector electoral period uh, with these non-refundable tax credits, for instance, that do not even benefit low-income Canadians. Aaron talks about the um, trying to s provide child care to Canadians through a mailbox with uh, a payment on a per m monthly basis that wouldn't buy four or five days of child care. That's simply out of touch with the realities faced by young families uh, and, and parents and grandparents. We've got to actually get away from the focus group economics of the Conservatives and actually start focusing on the real issues facing Canadians. Listen to Canadians and actually 
in, introduce the kinds of policies that can ensure Canadians not only have this, the skills for the jobs of today, but for the jobs of tomorrow. For, for example, the Conservatives bring out this jobs grant program without discussing it with the provinces. It's being rejected by the provinces and territories. And now we, we're stuck with a cut in funding for training for the provinces and nothing to replace it. That's the kind of incompetence and failure to build relationships with the provincial governments to deliver the kinds of results we need for young Canadians to get the skills they need to compete and succeed in this hyper competitive economy. The Conservatives are, now we are just not have one minute left, on, so I, I want to give Peggy done. an opportunity to respond as well. Well, thank you, Mercedes. I think what you have here is, uh, is a federal conservative government that is running from its scandals, and they were elected because Canadians were tired of liberal scandals. Uh, and I think one of the big scandals that Canadians see from coast to coast is the, the terrible waste of the many, many tens of millions of dollars that get spent on the Senate every year. And uh, the NDP is committed to getting rid of the Senate and its, its wasteful spending and its undemocratic structure. Uh, we're the only party that wants to do that. And we are the only party that has a clear focus on actually increasing infrastructure spending. The Conservatives announced a Build Canada Fund, a big infrastructure announcement, but in fact they're cutting infrastructure spending for 2014. And I think Canadians are seeing whether it's the, the lack of in investment in an air rail link in Toronto, the only major city that doesn't have an air rail link, or whether it's our aging hydro infrastructure, whether it's our transit infrastructure. Uh, we're seeing a government that is not showing leadership, and we're seeing it with our terrible record on climate change, where this government has failed in its one mission, which is to build more pipelines to export oil, because it doesn't have the credibility on environmental safeguards. So we well, Peggy, I've got to stop you to, there because we're we out of time. To but I have a feeling to investing in jobs and the environment. I think you're probably going to hear a lot more about jobs, the environment, and pipelines in the coming year, as well as the economy. Aaron, Peggy, and Scott, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks, thank Mercedes. You. Thank you. Well, the protesting former Senate page is back. Brigitte de Pape and fellow climate change activist staged another demonstration at a Vancouver event attended by the Prime Minister. We speak to one of the stage crashers next.